For the word of God is quick and powerful, and is sharper than two edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intent of our heart. Listen to this message and remain blessed. Joshua 24 13 to 15. Choose life. And I have given you a land for which you did not labor. And cities which ye built not, and ye dwelt in them, of the vineyards and olive yards which ye have planted, not do ye eat. 14. Now therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth, and put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood, and in Egypt, and serve ye the Lord. 15. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, he said, choose you this day, whom ye will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land ye dwell. He says, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Someone make that statement. We will serve the Lord. One more time. We will serve the Lord. Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 19. Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 19. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, he says, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. God wants to challenge us tonight by this teaching it's a call to put our lives in order. It is a call, I think it's Psalm 119 verse 133 or thereabout. Please find it for us. It says, order my steps. Yeah, beautiful. It says, order my steps in thy word and let not any iniquity have dominion over me. Order my steps. That means I'm tired of living a foolish life. I'm tired of rigmaroling around destiny. I want my life to have order, meaning, and precision. Hallelujah. One of the great blessings that I received from two very profound men, Dr. Mike Mudok, still alive, and Dr. Miles Munro of blessed memory, among the many things that they did to me as a contribution to my growth was the awareness of the power of choices and decisions. It is one thing that I learned about them, that decisions truly decide destiny. And I'm going to say a few things that I want you to please pay rapt attention to. Number one is that decisions decide destiny. Time does not decide destiny. Location does not necessarily decide destiny. Age does not necessarily decide destiny. Gender does not necessarily decide destiny. Ultimately, decisions decide an individual's destiny. It's important that you know this. I've said it here in this house that your decisions, more than your conditions, will decide the quality of your life or otherwise. Your decisions, more than your conditions, will decide the quality of your life. That means it doesn't matter what is currently happening in your life right now. Your decisions, more than your conditions, is what will determine the quality of your life eventually. The Bible and history is full of people who had beautiful conditions, but poor decisions turned those conditions to reflect the consequences of their decisions. An example is the prodigal son. The prodigal son had plenty. He had a responsible father. He had loving brothers and a family. But his singular decision to part ways with his family landed him in a destiny that we use today to warn people. Are we together? Lot was one who connected to Abraham, had the opportunity to live a life of meaning and purpose. And he decided to separate from Abraham and he found himself in Sodom. Decisions, more than your conditions, decide the quality 
of your life. Is someone learning? I have also taught you here that every decision is connected to consequences. A consequence is a corresponding outcome. A consequence, again I repeat, is a corresponding outcome. It's a resultant effect of a cause. So every time we make choices and decisions, please listen carefully. We do not choose consequences. There are consequences already connected by default to every decision. Poverty is a consequence. Failure is a consequence. Even death in many regards can be a consequence. There are certain sicknesses that are consequences beyond just medical conditions. A life of pain and depression and defeat is a consequence. Our world is full of people angry at consequences. Not knowing that we are not given the power to choose consequences. Please listen. We are not given the power to choose consequences. Consequences are already connected by default to decisions. We make choices and decisions. And the decisions automatically gravitate us to the corresponding consequences. So you can find two people, one living an excellent life in the spirit, an excellent life as a man of God, an excellent life in destiny. And then on the other hand, you will find an individual living a defeated life. What's the difference? It is not the will of God. What is the difference? It's not the presence of Satan. What is the difference? It's not even the territory where they are domiciled in. Ultimately, their decisions, there were consequences connected to those decisions. To one, he made a superior decision and benefited from a positive consequence. To another, he made a poor decision and the decision delivered without fail the consequences. Every one of us right now is living in the reality of consequences. Are we together? Everyone living in the reality of consequences. What you just watched a few minutes ago is a decision that was made. Now, you, there are consequences that follow this decision that was just made. Consequences of health, life, advancement. Decisions are so powerful that God himself reminds people that I said before you life and death, 30 and verse 19 of Deuteronomy, I said before you blessing and cursing, I said before you life and death, something so powerful that it can choose life or it can choose death for you. Something so powerful that it can bring you to a realm of blessing or a realm of cursing. He says, therefore, this is my counsel, choose life. Hallelujah. Now write the following please. To choose means that you have to be aware of all the other options available. To choose, this is the implication of making choices. That to choose means that you have to be aware of other options. Maybe not all other options, but other options that are available alongside the outcomes they create please listen you are not able to choose until you understand if i have just one option or just one outcome i cannot say choose the very idea of choosing means that there are many paths to life and destiny are we together the very idea of choosing means that you are at liberty there are many many possibilities you can sample different paths that you want to take in your life and destiny. To choose means you have to be aware. Most believers cannot make quality choices because they are not even aware of what the other options are. They gravitated by default into failure. They gravitated by default either from ancestry, are we together, or through environmental conditioning. The average individual has not been given an opportunity to see life from the lens of wisdom. To be able to see the options and the variables to destiny actualization. Are we together? So like people say, like father, like son, like mother, like daughter. 
I saw my father doing this. I am also doing it. I saw my mother doing this. I am also doing it. I saw people bribing and cheating. I'm also doing it. So the average believer is not aware that you truly cannot choose until the first miracle to be able to make quality choices and decisions is that you must be aware of the various options available. If you bring a buffet before me, now I can choose because there might be swallow, maybe rice in their various forms, maybe vegetables, maybe drinks and all of that. Then you can now tell me choose. But if you bring a plate of rice, what you should say is eat, not choose. Because that's the only thing that is there. Are we together? Most people are not aware, and I want you to listen carefully. The devil has blinded the mind of even believers. Most believers do not know that there is another way of living beyond the way they have known. Most believers do not know that your life can be lived in such a way and manner that is different from what you have known. The general psychology is that whatever you find, you follow suit. But I am announcing to you by the authority of scripture that the path you saw may not be the path needed for your destiny. The path you saw may not be the only path. The path of witchcraft, the path of failure, the path of irresponsibility. Are we together? The path of laziness and carelessness and idolatry. It may be the path you saw, but it's not the only path available. It's not my fault, Apostle. This is how life is. No. It is what you know. That may not be the only thing there. Imagine that you want to use a restroom and there are times that in a house or in a building, a structure such like this, there might be multiple restrooms, but they may direct you to one. And if that one is filled or in use, you just stand there stranded, not knowing that there can be other restrooms. It's just that you don't know how to get there. This is how it is with life. Do you know there are many people who do not know that there is a way out of a life of poverty? There are those who do not know that there is a way out of spiritual laxity and laziness. There is a way out of curses and yokes and spells. There is a way out of a life of defeat and mediocrity. Ladies and gentlemen, hear me. If God says choose life, then it means the spirit of wisdom has an assignment to open you up to the various options that are there leaving you with the decision to choose there were two trees in the garden of eden that is the first representation of god's determination to make man choose i said before you the tree of life then i said before you the tree of the knowledge of good and evil i can't force you god for you i can't force you i leave you to these options but i can only advise you choose life Hallelujah. With all due respect, the prisons today are full of many people, not all people, but many people who made choices and the corresponding consequences is what they are experiencing today. There are graves today that are testaments of negative consequences as a result of poor choices that people made with their lives. To choose me, you have to be aware of all the options that are available. Please, look up. Let me list for you at least four options that are available. Number one, a life of grace and glory, a life of dignity and honor is an option that is available on this table. Grace and glory, dignity and honor. It's an option you can choose from. Number two, a life of mediocrity, barely surviving, getting by. This is a second option. You are not exactly a failure, but you are not exactly a success too. Mediocrity, average. Number three, a life of total confusion with no sense of direction. That is a third option that can be there. Grace and glory, dignity and honor, mediocrity and an average life, barely getting by. Third option is a life of total confusion. Living from pillar to post, hoping you are right. 
and finally a life of total defeat total defeat failure by every definition every one of these outcomes that i just mentioned have decisions connected to them there is something you need to do that makes you have a life of dignity and honor a life of grace and glory there is something you need to do that makes you a mediocre you don't just become a mediocre you don't just become an average no there is something you need to do there is something you need to do that leaves you confused or not do that leaves you totally disoriented as far as life and destiny is concerned as a preacher as a parent as a leader and there is something you need to do or not do that leaves you a total failure and one who is an epitome of defeat i said before you life and death i said before you blessing and cursing and i advise you choose life the second thing i want you to know is that to choose life means to conclude on a path to follow after a careful examination of the various outcomes they produce i'll take it again then you listen to choose life or to choose means to conclude on a path to follow to choose means to conclude on a path to follow after careful examination of the various outcomes they produce so when we say you are choosing it means that you are not only aware of the various options but you consider all the options one by one until you are aware of the various consequences they produce then you now make a decision from a standpoint of knowledge haven't known all the consequences that they produce this is my conclusion to choose means to conclude on a path to follow after careful examination of the various outcomes they produce so you can take poverty as a case study study it carefully does this bless god does this bless you does this make you a blessing to people use scriptures to check it prosperity godliness irresponsibility are we together a life of dignity laziness all of these options you consider them then at the end of it you now come to a conclusion that based on my research i have chosen to follow a life of spirituality responsibility dignity are we together integrity and so on so choices happen only as a conclusion on a path to follow after careful examination of the various outcomes that they produce now choices and decisions are pathways please write it down choices and decisions are pathways they always lead somewhere choices and decisions are pathways p-a-t-h-w-a-y-s pathways they always lead somewhere choices and decisions are pathways they always lead somewhere my god write this as you believe it every time you are making a decision koinonia listen to me every time you are making choices imagine yourself going somewhere with choices come motion we move in destiny by making choices not just by moving with your feet that means in indecision even if you are moving you are still it is the path the path that you follow is from the choices that you make choices are pathways they always lead somewhere that means the moment you start making choices you must live where you are either to become better or to become worse choices are pathways they always lead somewhere are we together write the next point please i hope god is speaking to someone already prolonged indecision this one came by the spirit as i was preparing for this prolonged indecision is giving circumstances permission to choose for you prolonged indecision 
is giving circumstances permission to choose for you. That means when you stay in a state of indecision for a long time, what you only succeeded in doing was giving circumstances permission to choose anything for you. A farmer does not need to tell weeds to grow. All he needs to do is to refuse to farm and something will grow. What is the name? Agriculture. We are taught in agriculture that weeds are unwanted plants. They are plants, but they are just not wanted. Prolonged indecision is giving circumstances permission to choose for you. Wow. That means if you refuse to make choices and to decide, you will still find yourself going somewhere. That somewhere you go to, life and circumstances became impatient with your indecision and they chose for you. Hmm. I don't know if I will serve God. I don't know if I will be serious. Let's just see how it goes. Eventually, demons will manipulate life and they, you will follow the category of those who have hated God. And you find yourself suffering the consequence. And you say, I cannot remember making this choice. Prolonged indecision is giving life permission to choose for you. It is dangerous to allow circumstances choose your outcomes. It will always be to your disadvantage. Is God speaking to someone? Prolonged indecision is giving circumstances permission to choose for you. Next point, very quickly. God is challenging our thoughts. It takes making decisions to rise in life and it takes making decisions to fall in life. When people rise, it is because of decisions. When people fall or fail in life, it is because of decisions. It takes making decisions to rise in life and it takes making decisions to fall or to fail in life. If we're together, say amen. amen. Now, I want you to look up, please. Do you know the major way causes and enchantments work? I want to teach you something. Let me have your attention, please. Causes and enchantments. All these things we call causes and enchantments. Do you know how they work? They work by programming your ability to make decisions. This is principally how causes enchantments work it is also the way the blessing works all of them depend on the cooperation of your decisions they influence you curses enchantments manipulate you into making wrong choices and decisions so that you find out that your outcome becomes predictably bad the same spirit influence your father and he, for instance, got into drinking, got into whatever things, and it destroyed his life. You find out as a young man, when that curse is working on you, it has no power on you if you don't have a mind. It will manipulate your thinking to start making you make decisions. It plants your appetite around certain decisions that produce a predictable consequence. So it's not just that curses and enchantments work arbitrarily. No, they depend on the cooperation of your will. So one of the ways we really get delivered from curses and yokes I have taught you is not just conducting deliverance. It's giving you a superior orientation so that your choices will now come from another kind of information and idea. Is someone listening now? enchantments i have seen people who will tell you from today i will behave well from today i'll be a nice person and this spirit they manipulate the person now i hope you know it's not the spirits that carried your two legs to the place of trouble you went there by yourself they influenced you the same way when the blessing is on you it will make you to have an appetite to come to church and the day you come to church, that is the day your word will come. The day you come to church like the dear lady who gave the testimony, that is the day that you will meet your employee. And one thing will lead to the other. That is how the blessing works. So when I speak over you and say be blessed, among the many things the Holy Spirit is doing, it's not just a force that rests on you and vetoes your will. 
it begins to guide, I don't want to use the word manipulate, you don't use that for the spirit of God, but it begins to culture and influence your thinking. Are we together? And you will start making pro-life decisions, pro-prosperity decisions, pro-responsibility decisions, pro-development decisions. You can always know what spirit is influencing you by the kind of decisions you are making and the outcomes that follow. Are we together? If you find out that your life is always ending in pain, you are getting into trouble, all kinds of troubles. It is either you are wasting the ministry of the Holy Spirit through rebellion and stubbornness or it's not even the Holy Spirit who is there in the first place. I hope you know that many spirits can coexist within a man. The madman in Gadara, a good lesson. Peter, even though he was with Jesus, Jesus rebuked Satan from him and says, Peter, Satan has desired to sift you like wheat, but I have prayed for you. And Peter did not even know when Satan entered him. The Bible says, Satan entered Judas. So Judas' desire to use Jesus to make money was not ordinary. His will was there. But the assignment of Satan was to manipulate him. How many of you have seen a puppet? This thing they do for children. You put your hands inside and then you are making the thing sing. Now it can be so real you forget that it's actually a human being's hand. Are we together? But if you drop that thing without the hand, it has no power. The singing and the dancing happens because someone's hand is controlling it. I'm praying for somebody. In the name of Jesus Christ, every decision that has landed you in trouble, landed your family in pain, poverty, a life of mediocrity, a life that is far from God, I'm praying for you by the Spirit of the living God. Let a miracle of deliverance happen for you tonight. <laughs> Hallelujah. It takes making decisions to rise in life and it takes making decisions to fall or to fail in life. Failure has a formula. Are we together? Unfortunately for failure, you don't have to learn it to experience it. The formula was designed to find you and act upon you in the presence of ignorance. Write this down. The real value of wisdom, the real value of wisdom is in its ability to help you make destiny superior, destiny advancing decisions. I'll take it again. The real value of wisdom is in its ability to help you make superior, destiny advancing decisions. So if you say, I am wise, or I have the spirit of wisdom in my life, the real value of wisdom is in its ability to help you make superior destiny advancing decisions. Please write it, write it in your heart and write it on your notes. The real value of wisdom is in its ability to help you make superior destiny advancing decisions. There are many people claiming to be wise. There are many impartation services with all due respect that purport to impart wisdom. But we do not see the excellency of wisdom in the life of believers because believers are still surrounded by very foolish decisions that they keep making again and again and again. And the moment you see that the effects of the decisions that you make is not leading you towards a desired heaven, it then means you are bankrupt of wisdom. The Bible says, does any man lack wisdom? My question is, how do you know you do not have wisdom? By the outcomes of your life. You can know that I'm bankrupt of the wisdom of God by the outcomes. Listen, the real value of wisdom is in its ability to influence the quality of decisions that you make. When a man carries the spirit of wisdom, most, if not all, your decisions will be superior, destiny-advancing decisions. You can always know whether it is wisdom speaking or another spirit speaking by the quality of decisions. 
Are we together now? Yes. Listen, this issue of decisions, I remember many years ago, I would hear Dr. Mudok who say, decisions decide destiny. I, un I got what he was saying, but perhaps I did not understand the gravity of what he was saying. I've had the honor of meeting people I used to know many, many years ago. And for some of them, their lives have not changed. Or some of them have become very worst versions of themselves. I remember not too long ago, I met someone I used to know years ago. My goodness, his life was not something to write home about. I had to honestly ask him what happened. But then I was asking something that whose answer I already knew. Decisions. Decisions. Your conditions can be great, but your decisions will superimpose your conditions and bring you into a negative consequence if they are poor decisions. Whereas for another, you can come, you can have negative conditions surrounding you and make quality choices and decisions that end up bringing you to your desired heavens. I respected the power of choices and decisions when I came into a position of leadership and I understood how serious choices and decisions were. Do you know that one decision can make you a bad father forever? One decision can make you a bad mother forever. This is how powerful it is. One decision or indecision can send you to hell. Not two, not three. One decision. This is how powerful decisions are. There are people who have been sick in the hospital and yet they were able to survive. There are people who had accidents, hit by metals and all of that and were able to endure. But one decision you can make, it will not injure you physically, but it can literally define your eternal destiny. Whoever told you that choices and decisions are a cheap matter to play with, I can tell you sincerely you are where you are right now, looking at me, especially if you hate where you are. It is an uncomfortable truth, but I want you to admit it right now in Koinonia that you are where you are as a reflection of the decisions and the choices that you have made. Apostle, everybody hates me. It has to be demonic. I agree. But those demons require something to work on. And you donated your will through ignorance or your passion to not get knowledge and cooperated with them in bringing yourself to this current state. Can I tell you, your real deliverance begins the day you admit that I am where I am, comfortable or not, because of the decisions I have made with my life. Hallelujah. There are many people who have made foolish decisions in the name of smartness. Now, when the devil wants to deceive you, he changes the name of the consequences to attract you. Are we together now? Yes. Satan will call poison. Sweet or whatever it is. And then because the name changed does not mean the outcome will change. Are we together now? Yes. If you carry rotten food and you package it and put it in a beautiful cooler, does it change the state of the rotten food? It is still rotten. It's only the container. The only thing is that it will deceive more in that state but it is still rotten food. This is the game Satan has been playing with many people. Repackaging destruction in many packages that seem pleasant. And someone will come to the shop of life and destiny and your eyes will go straight to something that has the power to tear you into pieces. But because it is packaged so beautifully, you will say, this is what I want. God will respect you. Satan will rejoice with you. You make the choices. And then when you now buy it, you are forced to eat of it because this is what happens. Choose life that you and your children may live. I had the option of being a serious man of God or otherwise. I have the option of leading God's people with integrity and truth or otherwise. Are we together now? When you choose, it is the conclusion of many, many alternatives that you have thrown away. But the excellency of the decisions and the choices that you make, it is demonstrated. In, you see, let me tell you this. You cannot fake choices forever. No, 
it will catch up with you the consequences know your address more than DHL they will find you you make choices and travel anywhere they will fish you out it's not like this one that they'll say where's your house and be going around you know the delivery man will be tired because he cannot find where your house is even if you decide to go to a place where you are alone the choices are so powerful with digital precision they will look for you for instance there are people rejecting God now because they want money. Hello? Let me have your attention. There are people, the moment you mention anything God or anything church, because they are still 17 years, 25 years, 30 years, they say, I have time. Don't mind this thing of God. And then they open their eyes and find out they are celebrating 50. And all the children they gave back to, not one of them is serving God because like father, like son. Are we together now? And then they begin to get angry. What is this? There are people who made a decision and are making decisions now that they will not be responsible with their lives. They will wake up and find out you have 50, 60 years. You have not built any house. Your grandchildren, your children are still living in one room with all due respect. One way the devil distracts us and robs us of the power to choose is giving excuses and offense these two things excuses and offense are satan's weapons of mass destruction the moment you master the art of giving excuses and then you bring yourself to a life of offense you will never have the capacity to make quality choices Why is your prayer life still down? Well, you see, there's no light in my compound. I'm staying in a place where there are many noisy people and you know how this prayer thing, you need time. Excuses. Are we together? Yes. What did you do with the five million naira that they gave you? You know the way this country is, eh? I want to explain something. This, rather than taking responsibility to say, listen, I wasted it on riotous living. I am a prodigal son. I need help. Hello? The moment the prodigal son made up his mind to choose well, no demon in hell could keep him there. As powerful as Satan is, Satan could mislead him to leave the house. But the boy, can you imagine? No prayer warrior was interceding for him. By himself, he said, I will arise. Where were the spirits when he was going? The devil is not that powerful. It is the manipulation of your understanding that regardless what you choose, he can veto it. It's a lie. If God respects your choice, every other spirit must also respect your choice. He said, behold, I stand. Watch this. Behold, I stand at the door of your heart and knock. Who is knocking? God. Satan too knocks. It's just that he doesn't tell you he's knocking. He's too proud to admit that he needs to knock too. So he will manipulate you into believing. Give me the keys to your heart. And you give it to him. So he can open the door any day and any time. That revelation that God knocks is powerful. Every other spirit that has not been knocking, force it to go behind the door and say knock. And if you hear no, go away. Hallelujah. I will arise and I will go to my father. I will arise from this life of foolishness. I will arise from this misbehavior. Why is it that all good people keep living my life? I think there's just some disfavor. It's a lie. Every, you have made up your mind that you would talk anyhow. And people don't want you to be talking anyhow and carelessly. So they take you away from every time they are having their friends come around. If you say I'm coming to, they say, please, you are not invited. Is because of your mouth. It's, this is a self-inflicted cause. Because once you come there, you will rubbish that meeting and the business meeting will end up being a wrestling because of something you will say. Choices. You can make up your mind that I will trust God to teach my lips how to speak. I have taught you that everything God gave man, God gave man control over. Say control. Please shout it. Say control. There is nothing God gave man that God did not give man control. Anything God gave you 
that you lose control of it, a spirit has taken it over. Your appetites, your passion, your thinking, if it is God that gave you, he also gave you the power to control it. Is someone learning? I continue to watch people make bad choices with their lives. Destiny damaging choices, even Christians. And yet they are surprised why certain outcomes continue to recycle. Do you know there are people today, in all honesty, this year was like last year. Regardless what prophetic word came, because no prophetic word will veto your ability to choose. Prophetic words are announced so that you will know what God wants to do. Then align your decisions and your choices. Are we together? Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1. It shall come to pass. It's in your Bible. If thou shalt hearken. Why would God be explaining it to men? I thought he's all powerful. If you want to bless, bless God. If you want to curse, curse God. If you want to move it, Israel out of Egypt, move them. You are almighty. Why does God seem helpless when he's talking with men? Because he gave man one ability that makes man like him. The power to choose. Jesus had the power to say, God, plans have changed. I will not die for any man. These people are crazy. They are coming to die for them and they are not grateful. And God would have respected his choice. I hope you know that. The Bible says he was tempted in every way. Father, if it be thy will, take this cup of me. He said, I have the power to call a legion of angels. Many of us right now, the Lord gave me this message to the body of Christ. The decisions that you are making, you can pray and make wrong choices. Your wrong choices will veto your prayer. If God wants to help you, he will send you mercy. Another person will come and influence your mind. Can I tell you, your choices will influence you more than your prayer life. Hear what I'm teaching you. Your choices will influence the outcome of your life and destiny more than your prayer life. It is the reason why there is a lot of prayer with all due respect that happens in the body of Christ. And yet you do not see people making constructive destiny advancement. Because many believers just pray as a ritual. But they do not purify their decisions to make word compliant pro-destiny decisions. There are people till the next 10 years they will still be poor because of their decisions. There are people till the next 10 years they will never build a house. With all due respect, there are pastors and leaders for the next 10 years they will never rise. And don't say it does not matter. There are individuals whose lives will never make any notable kingdom impact because of decisions. Decisions. For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way of the Lord. For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way of the Lord. You've heard me say it here in Koinonia. If you come from a poor family, don't let a poor family come out of you. If you come from a family of witchcraft, don't let witchcraft come out of you. If you were raised with all due respect by irresponsible parents, don't waste the time arguing and hating them. And then you wake up and see children all around you and they call you daddy. You are almost tempted to say you are not my children. But time has gone. Many of you right now, you are wasting time in anger. You are wasting time in bitterness. Anger and bitterness does not lead you to your desired heaven. The day you settle down and choose. Apostle, I was raped when I was small. I sympathize with you. I don't downplay your pain. But if you stay there complaining, you will get to 40 years, 50 years and not make any quality decision. Apostle, I, I hate my parents because when other people were going to school, they were there around, dancing around masquerades. And the result now is all of us are poor. What are you doing about it? They have run their own course. Can I tell you, in my world, I have taught you koinonia. 
in my world an adult is not 18 years i respect that statistics but it's a deception to many people there are many many adults calling themselves children in my world the moment you can decide and you have an awareness of the consequences you become an adult immediately how soon immediately let's stop pampering people to produce destructive destinies you see someone 35 years 40 years and he says i'm a last one what does that mean <laughs> of course i'm not being sarcastic yes thank god that you're so destiny does not care ladies and gentlemen the one who decides if it be thou bid me come he said come the one who chose to walk out on water was the one who experienced that miracle hallelujah our world is full of commentators who never make choices and decide they comment about those making strategic impact and they cannot jump out of that water our business people i'm ashamed of them something as easy as this and they will never do it preachers who are talking like ah, that scripture is not really correct and yet they will never do anything impactful the world does not reward commentators it is those who get up and and do something with their lives are we together there are many people who insulted fathers insulted mothers parents now now is their turn their children are suffering worse conditions now if your father and your mother with all due respect lived a mediocre life the first way out is to find another father and mother who reflects what you want to become I told you that the principles of followership is twofold. Number one, follow them. Number two, looking on to Jesus. This is how we become in the kingdom. Follow them is the first principle of followership. There are some them that represent where you are going. Do you know why God creates, puts leaders in front of you? Those leaders are an attempt to model your future. That where you want to go to. So leaders are a personification of outcomes. A personification of decisions. So that you can see the outcome in the life of others. Seeing somebody fail and then you go and fail again. You are the one who is twice as unwise. Because they already failed for you. The beauty of leadership is an opportunity to see the scars of people. They will show you their scars that I made this decision. And this is the consequence. Now I am teaching you to save you the 20 years I wasted in my own life, a leader will say. And yet many people will not respect it. I have taught you here in Koinonia that do not only respect crowns, respect scars. Because both crowns and scars are teachers. Any man you see wearing a crown, look very well beyond the regalia look at his hands you will see a scar a scar a testament of wrong decisions a testament of endurance sometimes a testament of right decisions is someone learning ask bring sample 10 young believers someone who would tell you i'm going to be a great man of god and ask him what are you doing now he will tell you, well, uh, once in a while I listen to some messages if I have the time to. And then I just know what I'm focused on writing what God told me. My dear minister in the making, you will never arrive there by that behavior. No. No. There are many like you who wished ministry. Unfortunately, it does not happen by wishing. The Bible says, walk out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Walk it out hallelujah there are many gentlemen right now they cannot tell me the last time they read a book a quality pro destiny book many gentlemen cannot tell the last time they open themselves to receive quality strategic mentorship receiving mentorship at your terms is a joke you will never amount to anything it's like a teacher a student telling the teacher i'm not ready to learn now just be patient allow me rest when i'm ready i will call you teacher says nonsense <laughs> are we together how many people are poor and broke today 
but will never respect the wisdom that comes from people who have been helped by God. No. Hallelujah. You want to become a great mother and you see a woman who is exceptional with her home and her children and you disrespect them? Do you know every time I see great people, I look past their results. I want to buy into their mindset because their results are consequences. Did you hear that? Their results are consequences. There are decisions that led there. And I want to hear it. What is your understanding like? What are your decision-making processes like? Man of God, what decisions have you made that brought such power, such grace, such influence to your life? Let me sing that song again. For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way of the Lord. Now, let me tell you this. I came from an evangelical background and being that my whole training and my exposure in ministry was from the northern middle belt and context you know we got that foundation of character moral excellence but there were certain things about administrative excellence that I did not have the opportunity to see because of the background as God began to expose me to a global audience I knew that there were some things I did not get by the advantage of my background and that I will have to reinvent myself and so back to the formula of followership follow them looking on to Jesus there are things that them cannot teach you because the them to are students it's just that they have gone ahead are we together and I began to learn administrative principles these are things that you do not get just by impartation. No, you get by knowledge. Serious, constructive, definite knowledge. And I started getting the materials, opening up myself to the various trainings in addition to being a man of God to become an effective leader. Leader of resources, leader of people. You see that now? You want God to trust you to manage his resources and all you have is a sincere heart that is good but that is not enough no the dynamics of managing resources resources there being both human and material resources this one is a learned skill it comes by training it's not just a gift hallelujah there are many believers who are trusting God for increase and promotion you want to pastor 100 members there is a skill to pastor 100 members you want to pastor a thousand members with the mentality of the one who pastors a hundred members? No. God loves his sheep too much. He will not trust you with that kind of thing. There is something you need to know. The dynamics of conflict resolution. The dynamics of people management. There are several things you need to learn at an elevated state. In addition to prayer, fasting, and the ministry of the word. Decisions. What is the difference between someone who is running a big shopping mall and another person who is struggling with a small shop? It's not just exposure, it's their decisions. The person small there is either starting small or he has refused to grow. Refusal to grow is a decision and God and life can respect it. But the consequences that come with stuntedness will also meet you there. Without growth, there is no fruitfulness fruitfulness is a direct product of growth if you see a baby that is pregnant would you run away is that normal come on talk to me adults is that normal no no matter what genetic explanation they give in africa we'll call that person a witch wherever you came from you are older than this body you are entering and you would talk to the spirit and say you can't be that young and maybe in some places they may even completely throw away that that because fruitfulness is a product of growth. If you go and plant mango seed and by the next day you see a tiny branch and you see mangoes bigger than it, you will not eat that mango. Because we were trained to respect fruitfulness when we find growth. Are we together now? So most people brag about being fruitful but they do not want to grow. If you do not grow, you cannot be fruitful. Be fruitful in ministry, be fruitful in business, be fruitful in destiny. It is a product of growth. Please say growth. 
and I have taught you that success is not what you seek. Success is what you attract by who you are becoming. Your growth is how success is attracted to you. Are we together? The moment you transit into superior versions of you, you begin to attract a certain kind of people, a certain kind of resources, a certain kind of influence. These are irrefutable spiritual laws. Luke chapter 2 and verse 52. And Jesus increased. I like that scripture. And Jesus increased. Even though the word of God, even though the fountain of wisdom, he subjected himself to this law. He increased. What does that mean? Another measure of that increase came to him. In wisdom, in stature, in favor with God and with man. Once upon a time, I would never be able to say the whole globe should listen to me. Once upon a time, I was still alive, yet you will not come to hear me. Once upon a time, I was even anointed, yet you will not come to hear me. What happened? Growth. Growth. Once upon a time, it would be foolishness and a demonic attack for me to want to go to another nation and organize a conference. Where will the money come from? And if the money comes, where will the people come from? And if the people come, the level of grace to defend that call, say growth. This is very powerful. There are many people praying for realms that they are not willing to grow into and it will never come. Pastors are praying sincerely, Lord, give me a global vision. And they think all there is is anointing and one sermon. Ministry preaching only accounts for about 30% of ministry. There are many other unseen aspects of ministry. You can preach well and fail as if God did not call you. Breathe, Lord. Breathe. Breathe, Lord. Breathe. Breathe upon my life. Breathe, Lord. Breathe. Breathe, Lord. Breathe. Breathe upon my life. I receive. I manifest. Your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up and so That is why, even in the spirit, there is something called spiritual growth. Are we together now? There are things I can do now in the spirit I would not have been able to do 10 20 years ago. Not because it's not the same life I have, but exploring the riches of that life and walking in dexterity, the power, the grace, the wisdom. Are we together? And there are many young people because of this arrogance of our generation believing I can do all things in Christ. They have dared certain things that are beyond the scope of their growth and beyond the level of the spiritual power that they carry. And they have casualties to tell for it. You see, with all due respect, you see this simple thing here? Coming to have all the fathers in a land and then you are making declarations and speaking over spirits? Let me tell you, you better know where you stand before you take a risk like this. There are people, you do this kind of thing before the service is your dead body they will carry out. As simple as it sounds, because in making declarations, you are talking to spirits who are hearing you. <laughs> it sounds very easy, but there are idols in your own village. You go and try it. <laughs> Just go and gather the people and say, I come. I've read in my Bible, you shall take up serpents. Where is the, the those in charge of the shrine? <laughs> I'm not scaring you. Forget it if you don't grow. There are things you will see in the Bible, but on trying it, you've watched wrestling. That's what we call wrestling. Wrestling, that people jump and fly and, you know, fall down on one another and twist one another, throw them up as if they are playing. They give disclaimers and say you are watching for entertainment. Make sure, parents watch your children. Make sure they do not try it. By the time you see your little child tie something on his neck, because he wants to be Superman and then he climbs the dining table and jumps up and falls. Does that mean that realm cannot be attained? It can be attained by men, but not a man as small as that boy. 
there is something that boy can do and build muscles and stamina are we together one day the same person who was crying will now jump up and fall down that's how it is spiritually there is a level of capacity you must carry recognized by heaven and hell to be able to do certain things there are people today who have spoken over people i rebuke that 125 year course upon your life and by the next day they get into dementia they start forgetting everything and you are asking pastor what happened they 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 treaded a territory that their growth could not afford if growth was not necessary god will not appoint men to follow men nor men to ordain men are we together now is someone listening now yes we are talking decisions but it's important for you to listen growth when i was a child i thought like a child i acted like a child there are people who have refused to grow i'm going to say this because i want to round up by recapping something i've taught you but the lord put it in my spirit to challenge many people last year will look like this year this year will look like next year regardless the prophetic word that comes your 10 years will look like yesterday or even worse than yesterday if you do not understand the power of choices and decisions there are nations that when I travel to you will see something you once saw but when you get there you almost cannot know the place again because they have decided to improve and develop the place there are places you were as a child even with your eyes closed you can locate it as a child you were the one who hits the wall and that part in the wall you hit is still like that today now that you're an adult because nobody could fix whatever happened there it's not good nations can decide to remain stagnated individuals can decide to remain stagnated families can decide to be a center of reproach and shame men can decide that i will not rise i will remain small i pray for you whatever has kept you down my dear people in the name of jesus who is the son of the living god i'm praying that in this service you will begin to make constructive choices yeah. prostitution is a choice armed robbery is a choice laziness is a choice prayerlessness is a choice wordlessness is a choice refusing to come to church is a choice having bad friends is a choice having good friends is a choice being a failure is a choice it's just a choice whose dynamics you did not understand but it's a choice being poor is a choice being a mediocre is a choice living without help is a choice not enjoying the ministry of men is a choice failing in whatever you do is a choice becoming a child of god is a choice as powerful as the holy spirit is there are people here now who are not born again in all the overflows who are not born again the thousands following across the globe who are not born again he will be around you but he will respect you waiting for the moment you declare the lordship of jesus by yourself hallelujah now let me tell you the truth when god taught me this i made up my mind and i started making certain quality choices with my life I want you to listen now. Fasten your seatbelt because we are going to rush very, very fast. I began to make certain choices with my life. And the Lord gave me an assurance that if I insisted on making and staying on those choices, that I will become a certain kind of believer. And we are not yet there in the fullness, but we are determined to keep making those choices. Are we together? He won't stop, he won't stop Till my life looks like him He won't stop, he won't stop Till I look just like him He won't stop, he won't stop Till I look just like him 
I remember many years ago, I would see, I would watch Reinhard Bonke crusades and watch people rise up from wheelchairs, watch people throw crutches. You know, I didn't know the idea of being real or fake then, those things were not in my mind. But I was watching, my God, how can a man have this kind of power? He was not, with all due respect to him, he's joined the cloud of witnesses. He was not such an orator. No. He would not share some deep revelation from Greek and Hebrew. No. He would just stand and speak and fire that you can feel in your physical body. I said, what did this man touch? What kind of grace is this? How about um, T.L. Osborne? He was a sound teacher of the word. So he will teach and then you will see mighty miracles. How about Billy Graham? Billy Graham would teach like he's doing a discussion, like a lecture. You will almost feel sorry for him and think nobody will be convicted until he makes the altar call. You see people coming as if they are dragging a chain. Someone coming, you will know that this is the Holy Ghost pushing this man. Because the way the man's face is, you will know that that man should not be in front. And yet he's coming out. But today as preachers, we will shout and shout and shout and even beg people, even kneeling down. Okay, can you come to Jesus? Then we stand up. We raise a song again. We say, I know there's one more person. Come on, don't be ashamed. And, and there are many sinners watching. Even the people by their left and right know from the time service started, they have exhibited characteristics of sinners. The neighbors know the person should be in front and yet the person will not come out. Hallelujah. Because one person chose that as a simple stammerer that he would believe in God and he trusted God for the fire to fall and he made a choice. His choice was simple. God gave me a mandate that Africa shall be saved. And with that, this man went through all the disciplines by choice that produces an evangelist indeed. T.L. Osborne went to India he read his Bible oh, and went to India. And when he went to India, he was praying and asked people, okay, you know, all of this, he finished preaching and the people were just watching him. At the end of it, he prayed, no salvation, no miracles. He left as if they drove him away. He returned back to America and said, God, something must be wrong. This is not what I see in the Bible. And the Lord told him that ministry happens with a demonstration of power. You do not call a people from one side of a belief system to another without a demonstration of power. He said, oh, that's it. He settled down and got genuine spiritual power. He went back to India. When he preached, they were still looking at him like that. And he said one blind person should come out. One person on a wheelchair or I think on a crutch come out. Another person and in their presence, those people got healed. The place erupted erupted and without wasting energy he called people to jesus that's how it works maybe god is talking to someone if you go and do a crusade like that they will beat you on that ground don't embarrass the name of the lord stay carry until ye be endued with power say power if this thing has not landed on your head tarry oh tarry is it's not every region that will just report you to go and read the Bible. Even those that had power, they flog them. Talk more of those that do not have it. I mean, you have your Bible to read. Say power. Many of us downplay the power to choose. I know I'm digressing, but I am telling you, there are certain equippings if you do not carry, don't move to certain terrains. Don't go and call the nation. In Nigeria, nobody will sue you to court if they are not healed. There are regions you gather people, say the sick, the lame, the blind, you have all kinds of problems come. The people are coming, their lawyers are there coming too. And by the time you are done playing games, just when you think you are preparing to return back, you'll find out that you are in the prison. Hallelujah. Choices. Have you chosen to love God? Or are you just loving God? Have you chosen? Let me tell you something about choices. The fact that choices become deliberate 
it gives you the staying power to maintain and defend your decisions the moment you do not make a deliberate decision listen to me the energy to remain until you reap the consequences the outcome of that decision is not in you that means if i choose today that in the name of jesus christ i am going to become a great person for instance do you know the fact that you made that decision the way god designed it is the energy to stay there even when you are in the pit and daniel purposed in his heart give it to us daniel 1 verse 8 daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat it doesn't mean he was not hungry decisions are powerful the staying power the power to endure comes from making conscious decisions the day you make up your mind that i'm on a journey to get spiritual power the pain of fasting will no longer affect you believe me every time you feel weary the the fact that you have decided the fact that you have decided that is why before we fast here we announce to people that we're going to fast and this is what is for do you know why because if you just join carelessly by 10 you almost feel like you are sick because the staying power is not there let me tell you why many people cannot push until their destiny emerges they have not decided you want to be rich but you have not decided i'm not talking of a hustler you have not decided you have not seen the need the day you settle down and say lord this is my bible i choose that from this day forward my children will not beg for bread again can i tell you even if you are saying that in a one room the entire energy of heaven that needs to support your growth many people have not chosen to stop what they are doing men the, there are people without prayer they told themselves i will not smoke again i'm telling you without a preacher it was a decision they made and the day they made that decision either because they told them you have um what's this thing that you get when you smoke liver huh? lung cancer they tell them mr man the day you touch one uh this thing again that day you are going to die out of that fear will come a decision no prayer no fasting they just decided from today that's the end of it can i tell you the truth by the privilege of god's grace and without any sense of you of pride there are things in my life today it's not just a free gift it's a product of a choice the moment you choose the power to take your eyes away from many other variables leaves immediately are we together apostle i want to pray but do you know i pray there is a grace that comes so but that grace respects your choice you don't have the power to change yourself but you can choose and agree with god that i want to be changed hallelujah i remember very clearly when i made up my mind i said lord i have such scripture and i found out that if i am poor and i don't have the financial wherewithal i may not do ministry with integrity and i may not be able to help people therefore consciously i've listened to message not a money monger not just some prosperity jargon consciously because i want to serve jesus correctly i want to live a life of integrity in ministry and to be a blessing i made that vow today that me and poverty to be forever the day i made that decision there was no one naira in my pocket but it was signed in heaven can i tell you i don't mean to offend you truly many of you are not yet serious enough the realm of the spirit does not take you serious enough that's why some things have not changed did you hear what i said pastor you are not ready to grow that's why you are still giving flimsy excuses it's because another church is near me it's because this one is happening it's because i'm not an indigenous in abuja it's a lie the day you make up your mind and say there is a way out father the same lord is rich unto all there are fathers today with all due respect they are still giving flimsy excuses they've not paid us our arrears for five years that's why i've not risen it is a lie 
the day you get angry and say lord you are the one who made me a father over four children you cannot give me four children to turn my daughters and my sons into armed robbers and prostitutes from this day i made up my mind that my child will never lack school fees again you will see that the resources of heaven will rush towards you to support it it is a principle that both spirituality and psychology agree on that the moment you make a decision how to make that decision come to pass is released to you immediately the most important thing is to make the decision can i tell you there are many things i've decided in my life and in ministry at the point that decision was made the strategy was not even there but make the decision first for instance i will serve the lord all the days of my life what will i do now with the covenants of witchcraft don't worry you decide first in the name of jesus i will not take last in class again yeah, but i'm like that i'm not really very sharp in my mind you are not serious you are not serious no you are not serious i'm not very bright no you are not serious i know that i'm i'm a barrister but i'm not practicing you know nobody wants to even you are not serious i'm sorry don't feel bad but just believe me you are not serious apostle people come they come and receive miracles and they leave me you are both lying and you are not serious nobody leaves what works something about what you are saying is not true you think you are blessing them they are not getting blessed is someone getting angry let me speak to the gentleman for one minute i want you to vow a vow you know I, when i talk to you like this i talk to you in love there are some things you must choose to never let happen in your life one that i will love the lord with all my heart i'm, I'm going to run through those things for you number two i will be a responsible person as a leader and as a father no gentleman in koinonia should raise irresponsible children you cannot pay their school fees transferring the responsibility to your wife and saying after all the bible says two have become one it means you have been wasting my energy here with all the preaching that i've been preaching honestly apostle you are only saying this because somebody will give you a seed after koinonia where were they when we started decisions you can make up your mind from today and say in the name of Jesus by the next two years there are certain things that should happen in my life do you believe that you can make up your mind and say every day from today I will not sleep if I've not prayed for at least one hour decisions every day I must read this one or two chapters you will default some days but let the decision be there to guide you I make up my mind from today this and that and that friends you see the power to choose is an ability that god himself respects as for me i've chosen i used to tell them those days in zaria that the future of this ministry is in that word i across the nations of the earth and today by his grace he has brought great glory to himself and he's still bringing glory to himself it is not a mistake i am only grateful to see that some of the choices we made today are now being manifest in our lives i made up my mind that i will never be a man of god who will go and preach somewhere and waste the time of god's people and as soon as they share the grace i just say this man no 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 so that the choice whatever needs to be done as a sacrifice to prepare you is it praying is it fasting? Is it building your capacity? Choices is not just a mere wish. It's a decision backed up by the willingness to pay the price. That price factor, if you throw it away, you are not choosing. Hallelujah. I remember when I saw a few ministers of the gospel, especially watching their videos, I saw the kind of power that flowed through their life. I made a vow that I will never be a powerless man of God. I researched the subject of power with my passion and with my spirit. Let me tell you with every sense of humility, there are few books about power written by serious people that I've not read. This ministry of power, 
I follow the thing with grace. And every devil in hell, there are things that when it rests upon you, every devil in hell will know that there are things you have found. Are we together? I made up my mind that nobody will sit under an atmosphere like this that you are listening to me and all I will give you is just a lecture except your faith is not willing to receive. No. When you sit down, it's like you are connecting electricity from front to the back and something from the words. Your spirit, you know, you are receiving that impact. It's beyond an information. This is why you, you will think you are not understanding but it's entering your spirit. I will ask you this question one year later. You will still quote it because it entered your spirit. It's beyond the lecture. This one comes with power. Hallelujah. Is someone hearing what I'm saying now? Yes. I found out that the secret to effective ministry in addition to godliness, in addition to integrity, is to truly carry genuine power that solves the problems of people. It doesn't matter how sincere you are. If that power comes, you can do acted power, stage managed power, or assume power. You can assume you are powerful. When you see me stand and I say things like, oh, there are three people here. I hope you know that those things are not acting. I respect God, but I respect myself too. Are we together now? I will not come and embarrass myself in the presence of people and just, you know the risk it takes. You try it. It's not dull babies that are flying up and down. It's human beings who came to church, respected themselves. My own is to train my discernment that as it's coming from heaven, once it lands, it's like, it's, like, it's like a receptor that is so sharp. As soon as it arrives, I'm ready to declare it. That's why you see what you see. It's not like God just isolated somebody and decided, no, no. Discernment is a quality that can be trained. You can train your spirit to pick signals with such precision. That what God is saying in a moment, that's why it looks like as you are saying it is just happening, is a level of the development of discernment. Hallelujah. Are we together now? I'm saying this because I want to pray over you today. Huh? One of the graces that I'm praying will rest on you is the power to now begin to make quality choices quality choices remember my teaching at the miracle service that rise up and walk is greater than silver and gold you can have silver and gold but the greater blessing is the ability to rise up and walk to choose that my children will not beg again to choose that my spiritual life will not go up and down again ah, i set before you life and death I set before you blessing and cursing. I set before you a life of pain, a life of misery, or a life of glory. I advise you, choose life. Your choice will affect your seed. I saw certain patterns growing up around my territory. I saw certain, certain patterns around people who had gone ahead of me. And I made up my mind. I said, I will fight a good fight of faith and end certain things now. Let them end in my lifetime, in my presence. If it means me being the living sacrifice, let me be it. But there are certain things that must end. That's why I said, some of you are not yet angry enough. This sermon is supposed to provoke you. If you sit down and keep watching your life like that, what happened to your mother will happen to you. I'm telling you, I'm not a prophet of doom. Gentlemen, if you sit down, you know what spirits have done with preachers in your area. If you just sit down carelessly like that, the same thing will happen to you. You must take a different approach. I will not be the man of God that will finish preaching. There once upon a time I preached and demons attacked me. Not today, not again, not forever. Let me speak to preachers for a moment. Gentlemen, ladies, let me tell you, the end time army must be an army of power 
choose to invest in carrying genuine anointing hear me choose to invest in carrying genuine power talking grammar and stories the world is tired of it i assure you mm, power to heal power to raise men raise them from a dunghill power to declare over nations and shift the spiritual climate of nations don't stand before pharaoh if you don't have power you are confronting altars that are older than you you are confronting altars that kill those who went ahead of you don't just stand and speak grammar as for me i've chosen you ignore the ministry of power your life will be such a defeat i tell you the missing link for many people is that you have not made the choice to press you have not made the choice to pray you have not made the choice to study hallelujah I don't know why I'm speaking to preachers but let me tell you the truth the powerlessness of the average man of God with all due respect in this nation if we do not work on it we will keep getting angry with ourselves fighting ourselves out of jealousy and envy that is not necessary one thing thou lackest most people lack power you don't have power and say I have power it is nonsense it speaks hallelujah speaks the power that is greater than the cause holding your family you have not chosen to come out of it that's why oh apostle i've been suffering from bedwetting who will help me now i can tell you my dear brother my dear sister you are not ready to come out of it that is why there is something about a human spirit when it gets angry there is something about men when they are tired of their current situation yes sir the prodigal son got angry and said, hey, how many hired servants as my father? And I am here feeding with the swine. Do you believe what you are hearing? Choose life. I have chosen by myself that nothing is going to cut short my life before it's time. It's a choice. It's a choice. It's a choice. It's only when we get to heaven you will know how many shrines and how many herbalists call my name day and night. Let this man die. You are joking. We are here for a very long time. I said before you life and death. You believe what I'm saying? Don't keep quiet. Keeping quiet is a choice to remain a failure. Talando sabarika parusiata. I've seen the spirit of death. I've seen the people that the devil wanted to just take like that. Speak, listen. I learned this from Papa Copeland. Right from when this man was young, he would speak over the organs in his body. And people were laughing at him. Oh, a preacher does not carry fire and this. Many of them have died and gone. This man in his 80s is still standing. Still speaking to the parts of his body every part of my body god gave me must hear me yes sir you must hear me if you are not obeying me you are obeying someone else's instruction i need to know who that person is koinonia will not go down no there is no going down no there is a covenant backed up by the jealousy of jehovah there is nothing satan can do about it I want you to get angry tonight because I want you to see the areas of darkness in your life. You are allowing the devil destroy people in your life. There are people every year somebody must die. Every year. Can I tell you? You are, you are just mechanically aware you are a priest. It has not entered you by revelation. The day the, re the revelation of your priesthood enters you, ladies and gentlemen, you will stand up with power and shake that altar and said the last person that died in this family will be the last person an end comes to it. Hmm. 
Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff. They comfort me. They comfort me. They comfort me. Choose life. Choose life means choose health. Choose life means choose glory. Choose life means choose excellence. Choose life means choose power. The ability to produce results. Choose life means choose speed. Choose life means choose ever increasing glory. Choose life means choose greatness. Choose life means choose Jesus. Hallelujah. Please hear me. Hear me. Please hear me. Hear me. I sense in my spirit in the next, I wanted to run through a list about the various choices. I don't know if I will do that or not, but I just sense the spirit of prayer. Hear me, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight is the night that God has brought us to be angry at certain things that have been happening in our lives. You are a man of God here. Don't watch things go wrong in your ministry. You can make up your mind. You are a parent here. You are watching your child become maybe an alcoholic or something and you are saying there's nothing I cannot do. You can choose. It is the power God gave man. It is the power God gave man. It is the power God gave man. He respects that power himself. It is the power God gave man. Hallelujah. Listen, let me tell you this. Please listen to me. Just listen. Listen. When I took out time to study what a, a, an apostolic and a prophetic ministry, the implication of having an apostolic and a prophetic ministry, I remember reading several books on the apostolic ministry. When I saw the spiritual demands, the kind of weight and energy you must carry in the spirit to run a genuine apostolic and prophetic ministry, I knew that I was playing games. I was joking at that level of spirituality. Now, then the relational demands, the kind of influence you must command to be able to do ministry at that level effectively. Then the financial demand is the one that will even scare you. Hallelujah. Because the pioneering anointing is part of the equipping of the apostolic ministry. You will do things that have never been done before. Not in the way they have been done before. And doing new things carry a cost because you are setting the pace. Other people will model it and it will reduce the cost when others follow. But pioneering is expensive. Hallelujah. I went to God in prayer. I said, Lord, I want to do ministry with integrity. This finance thing has tied people down. I don't want this thing to be, I don't want to lose sleep because of money issues. And that's when I took out time. God showed me the power of decisions that you can change your life if you are serious. And I said, Lord, I'm serious. So, and I went to search from scripture. What is the secret of this thing? When I found it, I knew. And today, by the grace of God, we're able to do things for this ministry and across nations. By the grace of God and by the help of God, it has helped to protect integrity while we serve. 